Thank you all for being here today. Thanks to the Tesla Science Foundation for inviting me to speak. I'm going to do something a little bit different than most other speakers today. I'm going to talk about the spirituality change that is inherent in creating a free energy paradigm. So my presentation is entitled, Tesla and Humanity's Missing Paradigm Shift. And once again, my website is whatonearthishappening.com if you're not familiar with my work. This is going to be my only small caveat for this presentation. Uh, this is a meme that says, the only people who are mad at you for speaking the truth are the people who are living a lie. So some of the things I may say today may be a little bit difficult for some people to hear, but I'm going to say them anyway. So of course, we're all here to commemorate the great inventor and scientist Nikola Tesla and what uh, the vision for what he wanted to bring to the world to make possible for humanity. And unfortunately, Tesla's greatest visions for humanity and the technology that he envisioned to make that future possible has not come to fruition and has not manifested in our lives. And there are reasons for that, which I'm going to be getting into here today. See, Tesla was a visionary, and perhaps the people of his day were not ready for the very advanced uh, type of technology that he wanted to bring to the world. They weren't ready in a spiritual capacity, and I don't really see any indication that that has changed that much. We still have to go through a paradigm shift in consciousness before free energy can be manifested as a technology on Earth. So right now what we have is a controlled energy paradigm. We have nothing resembling a free energy paradigm. I call this the scarcity paradigm, and its hallmarks are it's polluting and unsustainable. It's based in the fear of scarcity. It perpetuates dependency, most of all dependency on government and utility companies. It's maintained by violence, exploitation, and imperialism. It promotes a separation worldview that nature belongs to us and is ours to conquer and use as we see fit. It is ultimately stagnating of humanity's spiritual progress, our evolution in consciousness. It is actually a completely immoral energy paradigm because of the violence it is based upon. It is in opposition to what I call spiritual law, moral law, or simply natural law. And the continued dependency on this paradigm will eventually lead to humanity's total slavery and ultimately extinction. And that is not fear-mongering, that is a simple matter of fact. What we say we want to see manifested in the world is a free energy paradigm. That's what the people in the free energy movement and the new technology movement say that they want. And I'm going to you know, say it like that. We say we want that. But you know, there are requirements for what we say we want. It's the, the things that we say that we want don't just magically occur in our world. We have to do things to make them happen. And the things that actually make them happen are not just physical. We have to go through mental transformations to prepare prepare the way for bringing this physical manifestation into the world. So the free energy, or what I call the abundance paradigm, is non-polluting and sustainable. It uh, creates empowerment via abundance. It promotes independence rather than dependence. It's based in genuine power, which means that no scarcity would obviate our human so-called need for aggression and war, which Tesla wanted to see abolished through his technology. It promotes an integral worldview as opposed to a separation worldview. And this integral worldview is basically that we are a part of the living system of nature. We are not separate from it. It promotes human evolutionary progress and consciousness. And the free energy paradigm is moral, meaning it is, it is in harmony with natural law, with the moral and spiritual laws of creation. This paradigm would lead to true freedom for all, for everyone on this planet. But we don't have this paradigm. Okay, We have this uh, controlled energy paradigm in place, and we say we want to get to the free energy paradigm, and there's a world in between these two things. Okay, So here's where we are uh, on the left, where we want to go is on the right, and, but you know, then there's this space in between where things haven't manifested. You could call it a transitional period. Now, in, I don't know if anybody remembers, but back in like the 90s leading into the early 2000s, spiritualists and those in perhaps the New Age community would refer to this as a paradigm shift, or simply the paradigm shift that humanity has to under, undergo. And uh, they, it was kind of a nebulous phrase, you know, it was never really fully quite defined in the, in the spiritualist communities. 
So, um, you know, I asked the question here today, what is this paradigm shift? What is actually the shift in consciousness that humanity has to undergo to make free energy a physical manifestation in our world? And it's not what people would quite what they would think, okay? Maybe not what many in this people in this room would think that it is. So um, I have actually covered the characteristics of this paradigm shift in a former presentation that I did back in 2014 in St. Louis. It was called Streetwise Spirituality. Okay, so this is my whole approach. It's a boots on the ground approach to spirituality, a spirit in the flesh approach. Very pragmatic, realistic view of spirituality as opposed to a feel good new agey approach. Okay, but uh, it actually uh, talks about what it really means to be a conscious individual what does it really mean to be quote unquote awake? We, you know, we float these terms out there, but do we really know what they mean? And in this presentation, I covered 20 um, aspects of the paradigm shift. So very briefly, I'll run down these. I'm not going to cover them in depth. You can watch the presentation, uh, Streetwise Spirituality, if you want to uh, explore those in depth. But it is knowledge of the world of the occult, meaning the hidden, specifically hidden science and hidden spirituality. Knowing that the truth and morality are objective. They are not subjective. They are objective and independent of our perceptions. And our job is to uh, learn the methodology by which we can discover truth truth objectively. It is knowing the characteristics of the higher self. It is knowing that the physical and spiritual aspects of our reality do not supersede each other, but yet they are actually one. It is about release from ego identification and ego attachment. It is the exercise of true discernment and judgment. It is becoming mentally free of all false religions or simply all false belief systems. It is understanding that knowledge is never negative, no matter how seemingly scary it may sound, uh, knowing it is worth it. It is about uh, knowledge that the current human condition is in fact a condition of slavery and the causal factors that have led to the current human condition. It is understanding and living in harmony with natural law, the moral and spiritual laws of creation that actually uh, govern the consequences of our behavior. It is knowing and living what I call the both of the pillars of enlightenment, the non-aggression principle and the self-defense principle, or the male and female pillars of enlightenment. It is knowing that authority, the concept of authority, the belief in authority itself is morally illegitimate, and that all forms of government are actually human slavery. It is the recognition of free will and total personal responsibility, which is required for a state of true freedom. It is knowing that so-called negative emotions serve a critical purpose. It is knowing that enlightenment is not about pursuing bliss while surrounded by suffering in our world. It is knowing what true forgiveness really means. It is knowing the difference between what cannot be changed and what should be changed. It is caring enough to take real world action to create real world change. It is knowing that enlightenment includes influencing others to improve themselves, not just about advancing yourself and stopping there. And it is ultimately knowing that enlightenment does not equate to perfection, no such thing in the 3D world. Here's the paradigm shift aspects that are absolutely the most critical to the emergence of free energy in our world. Knowledge of the occult, meaning we have to understand the hidden science that has been held back from our understanding, and we have to understand the hidden spirituality and the laws of the actual spiritual reality that we live in. It is becoming mentally free of all false religions, and too many people cling to false religions and false belief systems, as I'm going to get into. It is knowledge that the current human condition is slavery and the causal factors that have led to this condition. It is understanding natural law and living in harmony with it. And it is knowing that authority is morally illegitimate and that all forms of government are human slavery. Why hasn't this paradigm shift happened? Okay, and this is the hard part to hear. Most people on this planet still believe in the concept of authority, this belief that uh, government is somehow morally legitimate and necessary, and they still believe in the false le left-right political paradigm, which is a sham. It's, it's, fa it's a false reality, okay? It is a movie version of reality projected at us by the mainstream media, but it actually has nothing to do with what is really taking place in this world. It is a, um, a Hegelian dialectic that pits us against each other so that the masters can continue to rule us. Most people still believe the mainstream media and its pundits 
pundits are actually telling them anything that resembles truth. Unfortunately, this is true for most people in the world still today. Most people still believe that the purpose of mainstream science, or what I refer to as scientism, a religious belief system, is a genuine search for truth and a genuine search for the betterment of humanity through the understanding of nature and the development of new technologies. Most people still believe that the purpose of the so-called education system is to edify and enlighten people through genuine knowledge. And most people, unfortunately, still believe that the institutions of religion, banking, medicine, law, law enforcement, military, and just about every other societal institution exist to do what they claim they exist to do. And I would guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, that they exist to do quite the opposite of what their intended stated purpose is. And unfortunately, the vast body of humanity is still extraordinarily naive and condoning of these institutions that are based on violence violence and are based on fraud and deception, etc. And they don't want to admit that they've been duped. This is why the paradigm shift has not occurred. This is why we're still stuck in the controlled energy paradigm, and we're not leaving it until we get rid of these false belief systems. Until these false beliefs are purged from human consciousness, don't expect free energy to manifest. It will not. It can not manifest until we change our own belief systems and stop believing in things that are based in violence and coercion and deception and ignorance. Okay, so, you know, here's a little meme I picked up on the internet. It says, there is simply no polite way to tell people that they've dedicated their lives to an illusion. And this is what I've dedicated my lives, life to doing through public speaking. You know, and my approach is quite blunt. I like it that way. I don't make any apologies for it. Uh, it's, it's true, and I tell people, get as offended as you like about it. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm not here not to offend you. I'm here to speak harsh reality to people, and that's what I do unapologetically. Most people in the free energy movement still do not understand the free part. You know, most of them think this is about it being free as in gratis, as in not having to pay for it. They don't understand that a free energy system has to be based in a world that is based in true human freedom, which too few people truly value or even understand the meaning of. And that's the world. That's the current condition of our world. It's a slavery system that is locked down practically and it's getting worse. And it's, the reason that it's getting worse and the reason that we're in that condition is because we believe in this erroneous notion of authority that is based in violence and coercion. The belief in authority is an illusion of a diseased psyche based entirely in violence and built upon the erroneous and dogmatic belief that some people are masters who have the moral right to issue quite arbitrary commands, while others are their slaves who have a moral obligation to obey the masters. And if you don't think that's what government is, I would suggest that you're an extremely naive individual and you haven't really looked at the dynamics involved, because that is what it is at its base, le base level. Government is the world world's most dangerous religion, I call it the world's most dangerous cult. It is a cult belief system. Imagine being forced into a religion that you cannot opt out of. That's what government is. It is a religious belief system. See, in, in the past, in the old world order, you had this concept of authority being vested in one individual that ruled over everybody else. And as you went down that, that chain of command, or chain of obedience, as I like to call it, you had more people who were more ignorant and at the top you had total power and total knowledge. And in the past they called this slavery system kingship. That's what it was referred to as. It was completely immoral then, just as it is now or would be in the future. Okay, But see, today we've been duped into believing that we have something different than that when we have exactly the same thing. It's just authority that is, is vested in few. This is hegemony, this is oligarchy. This is what government is. Government is simply the same thing except you have diffused the power from one individual into a handful of individuals that comprise a ruling class. Ladies and gentlemen, it does not matter whether you have uh, an individual ruling the entirety of society or you have an oligarchy ruling the entirety of society. I don't care what you call that. You can euphemize it all you want, but that is called slavery, and that is the condition of humanity. That is what we are living in. Every single individual in this room, including myself, is a slave, and we are existing in a state of slavery on Earth. Whether you understand that or not is irrelevant. That is the case. The problem is too few people understand that that is the case. 
See, uh, people would call me somewhat crazy for saying it just that bluntly. But see, you know, this is a, also a meme that I picked up that I liked a lot. Let's see if I got this correct. You believe that people can't govern themselves as individuals. However, you, you also believe that some people can govern hundreds of millions of other people. It is actually the most ridiculous premise possible. I don't expect everybody to grasp this in just a short presentation format like this. I highly suggest that people go to my website and view my natural law seminar. It is probably the most profound spiritual work that you will ever encounter in your life. And I'm not saying that to toot my own horn. I'm saying that because you will probably never find spiritual information of this depth and magnitude uh, as opposed to what I have laid out in my nine hour presentation called natural law, the real law of attraction and how to apply it, apply it in your life. It is approximately nine hours long and is worth every second. The vast majority of the very people who say they want to see the manifestation of free energy are actually those who are blocking the manifestation of free energy by the very way that they continue to think. Thoughts become our reality, ladies and gentlemen. And if we do not change the way that we think, it is an impossibility for free energy to manifest because we will continue to manifest the same controlled energy paradigm for as long as our minds are not based in true freedom. This is mind control. This is where the vast majority of human beings are at. They are in a state of completely controlled thought where they cannot think of even the possibilities of what may be possible for humanity because of their limiting worldview and belief systems. And you can euphemize that all you want, just like you can euphemize slavery and call it government. I, people you know, use mental manipulation, you know, uh, they use all kinds of euphemisms for it, but I call it what it really is, mind control. And we are mind controlled by social engineers who continue to get us to think in a paradigm of false belief that will keep us enslaved. Free energy cannot be manifested as long as the people of Earth continue to believe in and condone humanity's current immoral institutions, which are based entirely in violence, coercion, deception, ignorance, greed, usury, and exploitation. This is most certainly not what Tesla envisioned for the human future. See, when it comes down to it, this is what most of us do. You know, we look to some form of a leader, and the leader is saying to us, who wants change? And everybody is very eager to raise their hand and jump to the front of the line and say, oh, yes, give us that, give us that. But then, when it is explained that what is required for the manifestation of that change to take place is for a massive change in the human mind and heart. We ourselves have to change. We have to go through the paradigm shift in our belief system, in our mental and spiritual lives. And very few people want that, you know? Then you could hear the crickets chirping, you know, and flies buzzing about the room, you know, because that takes deep internal work upon ourselves, which all too few people are willing to do and confront and look at our inner selves and our shadow side. Tesla wanted a future in which science would be used for the true betterment of humanity. That was his main goal. And many people think he backed off of his own projects because he knew that humanity was not ready. And we were like naive little children, that if we had the power of Tesla technology truly in our hands, it would be like putting nuclear bombs in the hands of children. Okay, so many people think he actually backed away from some of his most advanced uh, technology projects. And that may be true. But one thing is Tesla did understand that this paradigm shift would have to happen. He hinted at it in his quote when he said, peace can only come as a consequence of universal enlightenment. And I have said that free energy can only come as a consequence of universal enlightenment. In fact, what I would say is a world based in free energy can only come as a consequence of a universal paradigm shift in human consciousness. When we see that paradigm shift happen, then we will see the future that Tesla envisioned manifest, and it will create a future that humanity can scarcely envision at the current time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your kind attention.
You can visit my website at whatonearthishappening.com, and we have a table set up in the front. Come and visit us. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen.